In this next stage, we're going to add three things. We're going to add global variables, we're going to add more functions, and we're going to see two more of the templates. We're going to see the conditional and the iterative. And so one of the problems that can go wrong is what if someone passes us a room which is too big? And so what we can say is if the side that they've passed us, if the side that they've passed us is uh, proper, in other words, if it's less than 25 meters, then we will say that this is a proper room. And so what we'll do is we will, we will calculate the result. We will calculate the result as s times s only if the room is a proper size. In other words, the size of the room is less than 25 meters. And any room bigger than 25 meters must have been a mistake. And if the room is too big, the other condition, the if greater than 25, then we are going to say this is a bad thing and we're going to return the result of zero. But we've just had a mistake. The user did something wrong and so we want to remember the fact that the mistake has happened. So what we're going to do is create a global variable which is shared by all and seen. So anytime the user uh, does something wrong trying to calculate the size of the room that's bigger than 25 meters, we're going to say, no, that's a bad thing, and that we are going to increment that this error has happened. So here, this is a mistake, and we don't have the ability to calculate the size, and then we're going to say an error has just happened, and so we will take the error, add one to it, and return the result. Okay. But now we have a variable without an initialization, so we're going to need a way to initialize it. So when we have global variables, shared things, we're going to think about creating functions. In this case, it has no purpose other than to initialize the variable. So again, a function has got three things. It's got its prototype. In this case, no inputs, no outputs. It has its uh, body, and its purpose is to initialize the global. It's got no inputs. It's got no outputs. Uh, we'll leave notes. And again, its prototype is no returning. Its name is initialize. And it's got no input parameters. The purpose of this function is to initialize the variable that we're going to share. Uh, the third aspect of a function is its invocation. So that was the definition. And up here, it, during the initialization phase, we will invoke the function by calling it. Now, if the size of the room is bigger than 25, we get a wrong answer and it will print, the, and it, will print it out. The next thing we're going to do is is talk about how we would test it by doing something over and over again. So in this particular case here, what I'm going to do is rather than uh, repeat this many, many times, I'm going to put it in a loop, which is an iterative loop. And the first loop we're going to learn is the loop forever and ever and ever and ever, or the while one loop. The while one loop will take these three lines right here and repeat them over and over. This is one way in which we can test it. In this code, we will see that the side will go from 3, 5, 7, 9. And a better way to test it would be to add just 1 to it. Uh, similarly, we could start with a very small room. We could start with a room of size 1 
and now it will test our function starting with one, then the two, then the three, over and over again. All right, let's see what happens. Project, build. Okay, so let's debug. Hit debug. And now we'll step over and execute our function. There's the step over, step over, step over. Uh, side equals one. Uh, area we see in our our memory window, our, we see in our watch window the side of one has an area of one. In, we're in our while loop, we see the side goes to two and the area goes to four. Uh, step over, step over, side of three, area six, area of four, okay. side of four, area of, of 16. And if we look at our UART and we run it, we can use the UART window to test our program. Let's add one more condition, and that is stop. Again, the if statement allows you to do one thing or the other depending on the result. So what we're going to do here is after we've calculated the output, what we're going to do is if the area If the area is not equal to zero, again, an area of zero is one of the one of the mistakes, then we will print the room. And so if the error is equal to zero, we will skip the print statement. And if the area is valid, we will we will print it out. Alright, compile, which is a build, debug. And now we will look at the UART window and hit the run button and we see that it stop. We see that in the run window we have all the cases to test our program. If the input is one, two, three, four, five, six, up to the valid of 25, we see the size of all the rooms. And in this way we've tested it.